Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you what the minimum amount of experimental data is that's required to calibrate the Bergstrom Boyce model, which is a viscoplastic material model specifically for elastomer like materials. And I will show that you can actually calibrate this material model using a single experiment if you think carefully about what that experiment is. Um, and the idea here is, of course, why run more experiments than is needed? Experiments cost time, experiments cost money. So let's be smart about what experiments we run. And remember, what I'm talking about here is only for the Bergstrom Boyce model or similar models that are like, kind of two network models of this viscoplastic nature. I will have other videos in the future that talk about other material models that are perhaps even more advanced. And uh, the results I'm using here will be generated using M calibration from Polymer FEM. So the first case is a case where I have monotonic tension at a single strain rate. And I will demo this example live using the M calibration software. So in this example, I'm going to first generate the experimental data using a virtual load case. So I'm opening a load case here and I'm switching to virtual. I'm going to do the default setting engineering strain rate of 0.01 .01 until the engineering strain is 0.5. That's good enough for example. I'm going to then select the material model that I'll use as the, the true answer in this example. I'm going to use the polyumod BB model as we talked about. And here is the, the predicted stress strain response from this model. And I will use this as input for my calibration. So to do that, I will export this data here, say prediction. I'm going to select it. I will use um, engineering stress strain. I will also import it, export it in short format here. And then I'm going to click on save. And that saves the file. Now I can use this as the calibration example by uh, removing this data load case that we used for generation. I'm going to read in the new data file that we just generated here. And uh, here is the file, time, strain, and stress. And I'm just going to save it and save it. And here's the data now that I use for calibration. So this is the prediction of the stress strain response as in the form of an experimental data file. If I calibrate from here, it would work. It would be a perfect uh, fit because these are the parameters that are used. I need to perturb these parameters in a way to match the experimental data. So let's do that. And that's my perturbation. If I run it once now, you see that the predictions in the dashed line here is very far from the actual uh, starting point. The key here, can I come back to the real values of the parameters by calling it, calibrating this model to this particular experimental data set? And this is, you may uh, have guessed, it's really hard to do because we may not have enough experimental data for that. But let's demonstrate how that works. Uh, I've already done this, so I'm gonna go back to my presentation. So if you run through that calibration, you will see as shown in the uh, image here that you can perfectly fit the predict the experimental, in this case, stress strain data using uh, the initial guess of the material parameters as we had. And the final parameters that the software comes up with are these two in this column here. So it looks really good, but the problem is of course that the final values are not agreeing with the numbers that we use to generate the stress strain curve. It's a quite a big difference here, particularly in the M parameter. The, the real value was eight, but after calibration, we got 5.49. And I know that this will cause predictions that have a different strain rate dependence than that should have been. So this is not working. This is not what you should do. Just because it fits the data doesn't mean it's the right material model as we've shown here. We get the wrong parameters. But what if you do think about this a little bit? The reason why it didn't work in this case was that we only had information at one strain rate. Can we be smarter and come up with a specimen, perhaps something like this, where we have a different cross-sectional area in different regions? In this case, um, if you run this in, in Abacus, you'll see that the maximum strain here is much higher in the center than elsewhere. So one could argue that there will be different strain rates in different regions of this specimen, and therefore the predicted force displacement response of this specimen in tension may have enough information to calibrate this type of strain rate dependent material model. So to test that, I generated 
a force displacement curve from the known material model that we selected and this particular specimen geometry. I then uh, used the initial guess that was perturbed from the actual uh, answer. As you can see here, this is the predicted force displacement curve from the perturbed starting point. Then when I calibrate to it, you can see that I get a pretty good agreement between the predicted and the, uh, the true answer for the force displacement curve. So that works, but again, we don't get the right parameters. So this uh, sort of smarter idea of a material specimen geometry wasn't good enough. It didn't give us enough information about the strain rate dependence of the material, even though we didn't have the same strain rate in all points in this specimen. The M parameter in this case is still very different from what it should be. It wasn't really the best way to do it. But how about if we do two tests and two strain rates? Well, that's what a lot of people typically do. So let's try that next. So here's the, the strategy, as same as before. I generate stress strain predictions with the same material model at two strain rates, 0.01 and 0.1 per second. And then I perturb my parameters just like before. Here's the initial guess. And then when I try to calibrate this model to these two experimental curves, I get basically a perfect fit. And in this case, we actually get back the parameters that we started from. So this is an indication that, yes, you can calibrate the bergstrom boys model uh, very accurately using two tension tests at two different strain rates. And that's kind of no surprise, perhaps. This is two tests, though. I really want to see if we can do it in one test. So how about this? How we do, how about just the loading and unloading at a single strain rate? Will that work? So same strategy, we generate an experimental data file using a virtual load case. Here's the initial guess from which I will run the calibration. And as you can see, we can match the data really, really well, the, the stress strain data, but the parameters are again not quite right, particularly the M parameters, which is cru critical for the strain rate dependence, is not captured very well. So this wasn't working for us as one would I guess. This is a single strain rate after all, even though it's loading and unloading. How about if we do load, relax, and then continue loading it? So uh, here's an example. There's no unloading. I load it to 20% strain. I hold it for 30 seconds, and then I keep loading it up to this point. So now we have some relaxation data. Is this good enough for calibrating this material model? So here's the experimental data that I generate. Here's the initial guess in the dashed line. If I calibrate this case, I get a very good fit to the data, which we tend to get, right? But we can see that the actual parameters we obtain after the calibration match what they should be. So we, in this case, we have enough information to calibrate the viscoplastic material model once we added the relaxation segment to the test. So a single test for relaxation, in this case, works for this material model. How about if we do a strain rate jump? I remember uh, a lot of people back in the day talked about strain rate jumps as a way to determine the viscoelastic behavior, viscoplastic behavior of materials. So here's an example. I pull on it to 20% strain at a slow rate, and I increase the strain rate by 10x, and this is the response after that. Is this enough to calibrate this material model? So I perturb my parameters. Here's the initial guess. I run the calibration. And yes, we can match the stress strain data very well, no surprise. But there is a bit of a problem here. I would say that M parameters should be red here. It should be poor. I would say that this, in this case, didn't work. One could argue that it probably should have worked, but it didn't. It was not sensitive enough to the data. The calibration found a local minimum and not the actual minimum that we were looking for. So we would need to enhance this test with more information if we wanted to use it for calibration purposes. So to summarize, um, a lot of the basic tests people do are not good enough for calibrating a strain rate dependent viscoplastic material model like the BB model. You can see on the left ones it didn't work. But if you do two tests and two strain rates, that works. You can also use a load, relax, unload test. That also works for this material model. The best way, though, is to add a little bit more information. So what I typically recommend is loading, uh, unloading cycles, and then reloading at larger and larger strain amplitudes, but also insert relaxation segments in these cycles. That will give you a lot of information 
sufficient for calibrating the Bergstrom-Boys model. But you can do it in one test if you're interested, and this is how you would do it.